In the last lecture, we learned a little bit about arrays and how we can make arrays dynamic using encapsulation and abstraction. In this lecture, we're going to get into some other common data structures. So this lecture, we're going to focus on stacks, queues, and linked lists. There are a few others that we want to get into, but let's save those for a different video. Uh, stacks. We'll start off with stacks. Stacks are pretty simple. In fact, stacks are probably the simplest data structures besides plain old arrays. Uh, if you want to think about what a stack does, if you think about a stack of bowls, and plates is another good example, but I think bowls works a little better because it's harder to separate a stack of bowls. So if we have a stack of bowls, uh, you can easily add a bowl to the top of your stack. You can easily remove a bowl from the top of the stack. You can see inside that top bowl, but you can't really see what's inside any other bowl. You know, if you think about this, like if you took a sheet of paper and you stuck it in a bowl and then you put a bowl on top of it with another sheet of paper and then another bowl, the only paper that you could see was the paper that was in your top bowl. Uh, you couldn't easily pull something out of the middle and, you know, technically speaking, you could pick up the whole stack and pull things out of the bottom, but we're going to encapsulate this and abstract things so that you can't actually do that either. Uh, a stack really has three operations that we care about, uh, push, pop, and peak. So when we talk about a stack, I, I don't actually know why they chose these particular names. I bet there's a, a Wikipedia article out there on it somewhere, but uh, push, pop, and peak are how these have been since you know well before I learned how to, to work with a stack. So a stack, when we push a stack, we basically are adding a value to that stack. If your stack is well implemented, and there are a couple of implementation approaches we can take to building a stack, uh, any of those, your, your push should be big O of one. It should be a constant time operation. Uh, we'll get into the implementation of these quite a bit later, but for now, understand that when we add to a stack, it should be pretty fast. And when we remove a value from a stack, we call that a pop, and that should also be pretty fast, a big O of one operation. Now, if we want to peak at the top of a stack, that should also be fast, constant time operation, big O of one. Uh, and this is why we like to use stacks for a couple of different solutions, because if you think about this, you know, big O of one is really low cost. So if we need to store a bunch of data and we need to reverse a bunch of data, we can do that pretty effectively. You know, a really simple example here is if you want to reverse the values in a string, uh, you could just put all of the characters in a, in a stack and then pop them out one by one. So push each character in, pop each character out, and what you end up with is a reverse string. You'll end up with something that is in the opposite order of what you put it in there. And, and that's actually kind of a useful capability when we want to prioritize, like let's say we're processing a bunch of data, and we want to prioritize the most recent thing before we receive, you know, before we look at data that we received earlier. You put that data in a stack, and then you're always looking at the last thing you received. So uh, stacks can be pretty effective for a couple of different purposes. Queues are another data structure that we use a lot, uh, a lot in algorithms, but we can use them for other purposes as well. Uh, a queue, you know, if you're, if you speak American English, then you probably don't hear that word very much. But in uh, in England, they use it a lot. It's it's British English for line, you know. So if you go to like uh, the DMV or you go uh, to try to check out at a shopping or a uh, grocery store or something like that, like you get in the line, you get in the queue, um, and you basically enter one side of the queue, one side of the line, and the work happens at the other side, you know, kind of what you're waiting for. And a queue is a data structure that represents this. We add things to the end and we remove things from the front of the queue. Uh, so we put things on one side, we get things out the other side. Uh, it works pretty well. And there are a lot of times where we, we need to process a bunch of data or we process uh, some particular value in an algorithm. And we might want to do that in some kind of an order. A queue is a pretty good structure for allowing us to do that reasonably efficiently. So a queue has just a few operations. The ones that we really care about are the NQ, where we enqueue a value onto the, we add a value to the queue. And uh, this should be constant time if we have a good implementation. There are a couple of different implementation approaches to queues. You know, we, we will get into those in, in later lectures, but uh, a good queue should enqueue at the rate of about constant time. And a DQ operation should remove a value from the queue, and this should also be constant time as well. So if we use a queue effectively, we can add to it and remove from it, uh, add to one side of it and remove from the other side of it pretty effectively. Uh, and th this is going to be useful for a lot of purposes later. 
We also have linked lists. So we already talked about uh, dynamic arrays or array lists. A linked list is a little bit different. It's similar to a dynamic array in that we're going to keep a bunch of data. We're going to keep it in some particular order. It may not be sorted, but we want to understand where things are and we use indices or we may want to access things by some particular corresponding uh, place in the list. Uh, but a linked list doesn't work with an array behind it. It doesn't encapsulate an array. It encaps encapsulates a chain of values. Values. So a linked list basically takes a bunch of things called nodes and a node really is just a simple object with a value and a next reference. So the value is basically the thing we store and the next reference is where the next node is in this chain. Uh, because the linked list uses these nodes, it only uses space for exactly as much as it needs. It only takes enough objects to store what it needs. It doesn't have to waste a lot of space. So this picture might actually illustrate it a little bit. So if we have an array, it's a really simple thing. You know, you have indices 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and those correspond to some particular value. In this case, 0 index is F, 1 index is G, so on and so on. But a linked list is going to look something more like what you see at the bottom. You've got these node objects. They're represented by these circles here. And the node object has a value. You know, you can see the values are F, G, B, M, and K. And it also has a next reference. And we're representing that by an arrow here. The next reference points to some other node. And we have a couple of special node references here. We have the head, uh, head which points to the first item in our linked list. And then we have the tail, which points to the last item in our linked list. And we use these because it allows us to make our, uh, our implementation pretty efficient. So if we think about adding things, we can just add them at the end here. We have a tail so we can identify the tail. You know, the next thing after the tail can be the new thing. And we just move the tail around. And for the head, we can uh, add things at the head and move the head around. So we, we can do things pretty efficiently here to store them. But uh, we're going to run into some challenges with the linked list as well. Uh, this savings in space, it does come with a trade-off. You know, so when we only have direct access to the first node and the last node, retrieving anything from the middle is going to be costly. We basically have to iterate from the start and look at the head and then look at the next and then look at the next and then look at the next and look at the next, so on and so on. And you can see that's kind of going to get tedious pretty pretty quickly. Uh, so retrieval from the middle isn't going to be very, very efficient. And inserting or removing, you know, with the dynamic array, when we, we looked at the dynamic array, we could insert a value at the beginning, but we had to move everything. And we could remove a value at the beginning, but we'd still have to move everything into that old place. So that's not great either. But in the linked list, we don't have to move things around but we do have to figure out where they go so we might have you know if we want to insert something into the middle of the linked list we're going to have to iterate and iterate and iterate do that head next 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 until we get to that particular place and then put that value in which which could be costly so a linked list is going to have these operations it will have an add where we basically add a value to the end of the linked list since we have that reference to the tail and we can just add things at the tail and move the tail to the new value or the new node that we just created, this should be constant time. It should be the same no matter how many values in our, are in our linked list. However, retrieving a value from the linked list is going to be linear time. It's going to be big O of n. So when we retrieve a value from the linked list, we have to get it from the middle somewhere, which means we have to iterate. When we remove a value from our linked list, we actually have to iterate to where that is as well. So we have to, you know, that iteration is always going to be big O of n. Removing it will be pretty quickly once we're there, but then we have we have to find where it is. So that's big O of n. And inserting is going to be big O of n as well because we have the same problem. We have to find where it goes. Uh, we may also want to know the size. We may want to know the size of a queue or a stack as well, but we should probably just keep a count of the things that are in our linked list. If we keep that count, every time we add something to our linked list, we can add a a one to that value. And every time we remove something from our linked list, we can remove one from that value. So we can just keep a, a value to identify how many things are there. And we can return that when we call size. So we can make that constant time as well. Uh, now, the thing to consider is that we can remove from the front of the linked list pretty easily. We re can remove and add to the front pretty easily. So let's compare how a linked list and a dynamic array behave. So when we add to a linked list, that's constant time. We just add at the end, and it's going to be the same all the time. And with a dynamic array, it's going to be constant time too, most of the time, unless we have to resize. If we have to resize, that's going to require a whole lot of extra work. When we retrieve from a linked list, that's going to be a big O of n operation because we have to iterate to where that value is. So, you know, head.next.next.next.next is going to be complex. But in a dynamic array, since it's using an array, that's going to be fast. 
With remove, it's going to be big O of n both times, but it's a different kind of big O of n. In a linked list, it's going to take us a while to figure out where the thing is and then very quickly to remove it. In a dynamic array, it's going to be very quick to remove it, but then we have to move everything else into place. So we're going to pay about the same cost here either way, big O of n. Same with insert. We have the same kind of problem with insert. We have to either iterate to where it goes and then insert it into a linked list, or we have to, in a dynamic array, we have to basically know where it is, but then we have to move to make space for it. So uh, it's going to be big O of n either way. Size should be pretty fast, big O of 1 both times. We should keep track of how many things we have. When we add to the end, uh, we have a big O of 1 operation in both cases because we keep track of the tail, so we can just add values at the tail. When we add to the end of a dynamic array, again, it's going to be big O of 1 most of the time. Unless we have to resize, we're just going to put one more value in at the end. Adding to the beginning is a little different though. You know, with a linked list, we can add at the head, and that's going to be a constant time operation. That's going to be big O of one. With a dynamic array, we have to add to, we have to make room for that thing at the beginning, so it's going to be a big O of n operation. When we remove from the end, with a linked list, that's going to be costly because we actually have to figure out where the new tail is. So that, that's going to require us to iterate all the way to the end. So that's not great for a linked list. But with an, a dynamic array, removing from the end, we just take that last thing off. That's actually not going to be a problem. So we have big O of 1 there. And then remove from the beginning. Well, with a linked list, if we have to remove something from the beginning, it's really easy to just set the head to the next thing in our linked list. So that's a constant time operation. But in a dynamic array, that's going to be a, a, a linear operation, a big O of n operation, because we have to move everything into its place. So you can see here, there's some nuance between linked lists and dynamic arrays. Though they kind of accomplish the same thing, they can have some challenges. And it's going to be a little bit difficult to, to kind of work with both of these structures uh, all of the time. We, we may want to use one sometimes, and we may want to use the other other times. You know, it's just different data structures have different capabilities for different situations. But if we stop and think about this, you know, if we want to add to the beginning and remove from the end, uh, or add to the end, or add to the end, and remove from the beginning. That's going to work pretty well for a queue if we use a linked list. If we add to the with a, an array list, it's going to or a dynamic array. It's going to be a little bit harder to build that queue because we have to be a little bit smarter because we we can only remove and add from the same side. So if we want to build a stack, a dynamic array, as long as we do that at the end, is going to work pretty well. If we want to do the same thing with a linked list, we just have to use the the head side of it. So because we can add to the beginning and remove from the beginning pretty effectively. So hopefully the the structure of these is starting to become a little bit clearer, and you can think about how we can employ these different approaches to build some of these other data structures. So here we covered stacks, which is just a data structure that represents a stack of things. We take from the top of the stack, we, we add to the top of the stack. Uh, we talked about queues, which is a data structure that allows us to put things in one side and take them out the other side, or put things on the bottom and take them off the top, or you know, however you want to orient your queue or your, your, your representation of that. And then linked lists, which allow us to kind of perform the same operations as a dynamic array, but with some different trade-offs there. So we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, an overview of some other data structures. Uh, but for now, thanks for listening.